Welcome to Autodesk Inventor Pro 2014. This particular video is going to be looking at how to create a puzzle cube and we'll be creating a second video on puzzle cube assemblies and drawing outputs. But we're going to focus on how to create a puzzle cube a part or a couple of parts in this particular uh, video. So first what we're going to do is take a look at the interface. The 2014 interface is pretty stable, hasn't changed much for the last several releases. We can either create new work from the pop-up, the welcome menu, um, which allows you to also go over other skill videos and tutorials uh, in Autodesk 360, which is their new online storage location um, for you to store your files. That's part of the Autodesk subscription now along with that we can pick new here or we can close this pop-up and we can actually choose new from the upper left hand corner of the actual inventor software so when we choose the new from the inventor software we can choose English or metric or mold design base today we're going to be working in English uh, sheet metal or standard drawing that's a part that's a single object we can create assemblies, mold design, standard assemblies, or weld based assemblies. We have our drawing creation within Inventor, but we also have AutoCAD drawing creation. And again, none of this is brand new. This has all been within Inventor for several releases. And then at the very bottom, we have the presentation or exploded assembly tool. We're going to go ahead and choose a standard IPT to create our first part, and we'll choose Create. So we'll pick standard IPT, we'll pick create. It'll take a second for the system to uh, bring up the drawing environment. And the way that the drawing environment begins is not directly in a sketch mode. You actually begin at the part level and then you have to create the first sketch to begin creating the parts. I know that sounds kind of unique but that's the current setup. So before we actually begin drawing, we have to create the sketch. So we'll choose Create Sketch, and we're going to pick the top half of the button. If you pick the bottom half, you're going to create either a 2D sketch, or then there's also a 3D sketch. We want to create two-dimensional sketches. Our parts, even though they're 3D parts, we're going to be working on two-dimensional drawing surfaces to create the three-dimensional objects just works a little bit easier if we were going to create something very uh, unique being uh, non-linear, non-planar, then we can use the 3D sketch environment. Uh, but for most part we're going to be using the 2D sketches for most of the parts. When we choose the sketch it's going to ask us to begin on a working surface and these are basically your six axes to work from and you're looking at three of the six so we can pick uh, a vertical plane or we can pick the opposite direction or a perpendicular direction vertical plane or we can pick the top surface. Now this is important because this determines the orientation, the basic orientation of the part you're creating. So if you know that you need the part to stand vertical, you should pick a vertical work plane. If the part begins on a desktop or is horizontal, and you're extruding vertically up from that horizontal surface, then choose the horizontal surface to begin your part. So this gives you the flexibility to determine which way your part should be created. I'm going to go ahead and choose this vertical surface to create my part. So what happened was is that we're now looking at a two-dimensional vertical surface. In the upper corner we have what is known as the view cube. And the house will get us back to that three-dimensional look, but the view cube gives us the top front right side orientation. You'll notice that my right side has been rotated um, 90 degrees. Well, I can also unrotate that by using the rotate arrow. So I'm going to go ahead and rotate it so I can see the right lettering properly. Again, depending upon where you pick and how you pick, this rotation may take place. The yellow dot in the middle is 000 on that surface. 
And we're going to use that to begin our sketch, and that becomes our first anchor point of our overall drawing. The other tools that are over here on the right hand side are viewing tools. We can orbit or 3D rotate our images around. But the other one that we use quite a bit is zoom for magnification. So we can magnify a certain part and then pan where we can shift on the screen because sometimes the objects get shifted off the screen. You can also use the wheel mouse on many wheel mice to allow you to magnify and demagnify the screen. So we're going to begin drawing our cube by drawing some lines because we're looking at drawing a basic sketch. We're going to start and notice that the yellow dot turned green when I put my pointer on it. That allows me to guarantee an anchor location. So we're going to create a basic shape here. I'm going to take a horizontal line, draw it vertical, and as I create this vertical line, I'm going to go ahead and create it so it, all we're doing is ballparking what the shape is going to look like. We're not real consistent on sizing right now because the whole concept of Inventor is to give you the flexibility to custom create your shape. So to accomplish this, what we're going to do is take this particular object and clean it up and add dimensions which will provide us the stability of the object. So I can pan the object so it's a little bit more in the center of my screen. Makes it easier for you to see. And that's what the pan does. And the zoom will allow us to magnify. Now I can also just use the wheel mouse, which is what I just did, is roll my wheel on the wheel mouse. And it magnified the, the component. Now I purposely drew this so it had some angled lines in it and it wasn't perfectly linear. You'll also notice that two of the lines are already purple or dark blue, whichever color you see best, but it's a, it's a purplish dark blue. What that means is that those two lines are already constrained. And so with those two lines already being constrained, I don't have to add dimensions to those components. So the first thing we need to do is start adding our constraints. And there's two different types of constraints we can add. We can add con dimensional constraints, or we can add graphical constraints or geometry-based constraints. And we'll start with, a, with the geometry-based constraints first. And in this case, we're going to choose perpendicular. So I want to make sure that a line is perpendicular to another surface. So I'll pick the perpendicular option. I'll pick the surface, and I want this surface, since it's horizontal and it's the one that we know that is on the x-axis, is my base. And I want this line to be perpendicular to it, so it's straight. And you'll notice how it happens. It totally cleaned that line up, and it made it perfectly straight just by using the geometry associated with it. We can also use horizontal and vertical constraints to, to make the objects horizontal or vertical. Uh, some of the other ones that are used significantly, parallel, tangent, those are really good to use. And then equal. So if things are going to be equal distance or equal size, we're going to use this once we add a dimension so we can make other items exactly equal to that single dimension. It saves on the number of dimensions that you have to, have to utilize within your drawing. You'll also know, notice down here in the bottom right hand side, it says that we need eight more dimensions to constrain this object. And our goal is to have it fully constrained, so there's zero dimensions needed. And we can do that either by using the geometry tools or the dimension tools. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a dimension. And the dimension process is picking the dimension tool. I pick a line, or I can pick between two surfaces. In either case, I'll create a dimension. So right now, my dimension here is 1.3. Well, my block, my cube, is only going to be a half inch. I'm making a half inch base puzzle cube. And so if we type in 0.5, it's going to make that a half inch. So I can say that I want to make this line and this line equal. But we also need to make it parallel to this surface. So I need to clean this line up 
geometrically before I can add the dimension. So let's go ahead and make the parallel connection first. We're going to do a parallel constraint so that this line and this line are always parallel to each other. And then we'll use the equal constraint to ensure that this line and this line are always equal. Huh. So we've got this line still that's at an angle, and I can use either the parallel to the bottom, or I can use perpendicular, and say I want to make this line and this line perpendicular to each other. Perfect. That looks really good too. So with the half inch cube, I also can make this surface a half inch. So between here and here, we need to make that a half inch. And now we can start dimensioning the overall size of the block because we've now constrained the general shape of the block. So it's position and size are the two levels of dimensioning you need to look at. So if I do a dimension from here to here, we can make this block 1.0 inches. And I can dimension from here to here and make this block 1.0 inches and then dimension from the top to the bottom and make this 1.50 because that would be three blocks wide or three blocks high one block two blocks three blocks so magnifying this up and then panning it over so you can see all the features you can see how this works so I made this one inch wide made this one inch wide and made this three blocks high now you might think well why don't I just create half inch blocks and then I'll just make a whole bunch of the one half inch blocks and assemble them together and you can do that using the assembly tools however the more components you have the more po the higher the po probability of an error occurring that you don't necessarily get things flush or located properly so when working with puzzle cubes it's a good idea to make a solid puzzle cube in the shape and size that you need as opposed to the individual so this would take one two three four five different parts to create just this one cube it's just efficiency in design uh, predicates that we should have one single part. Okay, so now we've got our part created. We've got it dimensioned. It tells us at the bottom it's fully constrained, that we don't need any more dimensions. We can also tell that because there's no more green lines left. So when we're finished sketching, we choose the Finish Sketch tool. And it goes into a three-dimensional orientation. Notice the puzzle cube in, in the side, and I'm going to go ahead and pan this down so it's back in the middle again. But notice the puzzle cube's in a three-dimensional orientation also. I need to extrude my object, so I'm going to choose Extrude. Now, it's always going to extrude in the positive Z direction. Well, actually, in this case, it's going to be the positive X direction because we drew on the Y and Z. So if we were drawing an X and Y, it would always extrude in positive Z. In this case, we drew on the YZ surface, so we're going to extrude in positive X. Well, how wide does this block have to be? Well, it's a half inch. It's a half inch puzzle cube, so it's a half inch size block, because the thickness of the block is a half inch. Now, we can either extrude it this direction, or I can change the direction of extrusion by selecting direction 2. In this particular drawing, I don't... I don't recommend using symmetric or asymmetric extrusions, but the either direction is an appropriate selection. So I'll keep it at direction 1, it typed in the half inch, and we'll choose OK. Now at this point we have a three-dimensional puzzle cube. How do we know that it's three-dimensional? Because I can come up here to the view cube, press left mouse click and hold, and I can rotate it and see that it is truly a three-dimensional object. 
but it's really gray and it doesn't look really good. So how do I put a color on it? Well, up on the very top row, we've got default colors and default materials. So we can use generic colors and generic materials and we've got other colors that we can coordinate here. So if we want to use red, I can just choose the red under the default color material. And if there's a specific color we really want, we want to change the, the specific uh, coloring environment, we can do that. I'm going to go ahead and hit the home button so that way it magnifies it and makes it home. But you can see how easy it is. Now if I really didn't want it red and I wanted it to be blue, so I can come up and find blue on the list and it's going to be blue wall paint glossy or blue glazing. We'll go blue glossy. But you can see how easy it is. Now when I save this part, the color will be saved with the part and it will go all the way through to the assembly when we assemble this particular component, the color will remain. The last step that we need to do is save our work. So to save your work, you can hit the Save button up top, but I recommend that you go up to the magical letter I in the upper left-hand corner, choose the magical I, and choose Save As. Now to save time, I've created a folder called Puzzle Cube, and I've already saved it called Puzzle Cube Part A. That just makes it easier. But the idea is that I may have to go and choose the location of where I want this to save, and I can hit the down arrow to do that. I can also go up a level, or I can create a new folder if I needed to. Um, typing in the name, again, type in the name. It's preferred not to use special characters. Spaces are okay. It's going to be saved as an inventor IPT file. Be aware that Autodesk Inventor 14 files are not openable in previous releases. They update the database each year, so you can go up the ladder from 13 to 14, but you can't come back down typically from 14 to 13 or 12, 11 without exporting it to a native solid file. And then you lose the dimensions, uh, the parametric dimensions that are built within the drawing itself. Hit the Save button. It's going to say, do you really want to replace it? You bet. And there you have it. And it came up with an error message because it says, well, if you're going to use the save as, you got to name it with a new name. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and cancel it since I know that I've just saved it. But for you, go ahead and type in a name. It'll save it, and you'll be all set. Have a great day.